Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for episode 68 of the Railcraft server Let's Play. After a bit of a break, I suppose, I skipped a couple of episodes because uh, of the combination of the server being a bit broken due to a couple of mods uh, interacting in a bad way, and Christmas uh, weekend kind of happened in the middle of that, uh, so I got kind of busy. But now we're back, and um, I think I figured out why the uh, reactor program wasn't working. I'm not sure why it was uh, silently failing without actually outputting anything, but I think the reason was I was missing this adapter uh, on a redstone port, which was a part of the uh, design in the test world. Uh, and I'd forgotten to put that up here, but I managed to figure out that it was missing. And if we have a look at this, which is a screenshot of the original design, of course, that I have on my desktop on a giant post-it note. You can see there that we have the uh, redstone IO port and the adapter. Uh, and that adapter was missing. Now, we also have the adapter on the MFSU, which is also part of the program, I believe, and it will it might fail without that as well. Uh, fortunately, I do have a few more adapters, so we can put one here. And then we're going to have to connect that. And I don't think I actually have enough. I definitely don't have enough. Uh, cables for that, unfortunately. So can only get part of the way. So we're going to have to make more of those, two more I need. And I also want to, as you can see, we have the output from Eve here, which is of course on the left side as it was before. And I put the redstone paste around the reactor over to this side. But what I'm going to do is we're actually going to cut this off here. You can see the signal is getting, was getting kind of weak here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, I don't have any, I do have, I have more redstone IO ports upstairs in the computer chest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a redstone port say here, connect it to uh, this adapter via a cable. And then we're going to have this uh, redstone wire go up here like that. It's going to output the signal from Eve into the uh, redstone IO port. And then we're going to add that to the program as an external override. So over here we have, oh, I actually have cables here. Nice. And I don't have to make any more right now, which is lovely. Okay. So we put a redstone IO port there, connect them up via cables. And then we can hook that up. Oh, well, shoot. That's where it's 12 components. Well, this counts as a component, right? Yeah, that, that works, I guess. But if I put that back, it's going to fail. So basically what I have to do is when if I want to use the disk drive, I'm going to have to disconnect, say, this. 
and put the disk drive down, transfer any files I need, and then remove the disk drive again, and then reconnect this adapter. Uh, and this is one of the situations why where servers are good because they have a higher component uh, limit uh, or you, you can upgrade the component limit using uh, component buzzes instead of having to upgrade the uh, I was about to say compressor uh, I mean processor because if I wanted to bump this up to the next tier I would also have to upgrade the case which would be a little bit of a pain. Um, just a little bit though, I suppose. Now we're going to pop over to the um, programs. And I apparently have some uncommitted changes. What? Uh, let's see, where's the, let's see. Oh. All right, so some indentation changes, I guess some other stuff I changed which I apparently have forgotten to commit okay I guess I'm committing this to the repository I did do a bit of stuff right added local to functions I added this function and then changed how this worked yeah just some stuff let's push that to the repository on GitLab and then we can get to updating this stuff so reactor control have I these are probably still um, test from the test world which is probably not a good thing uh, what I probably want to do is add a couple of checks here to make sure that the required components are actually present. So I guess that can happen here as early as possible. And I think all I need to do is check if they are, are nil. So if modem is nil uh, equals nil, then error no modem found and then end. And then if uh, pipe control equals nil, then error. And the error function will cause the computer to stop with an error message, I think. It's not the same as stopping the program, but since it's a pretty critical error to have missing components, I think this is probably fine. Uh, if it's annoying, I may replace it later, but it'll do for now. Uh, now, pipe control was a redstone IO block, right? Yeah. 
pipe control is a redstone. Uh, no redstone IO pipe control found. Yep. Can I one line these? I can one line these. I'll do. And then if uh, reactor control equals nil, actually, I think I can do this. That's should be equivalent, right? Error, no redstone I on I O nope uh, reactor control found and then we're going to change these slightly more space efficient to have just not I think not uh, tank then error no tank transposer found end if not reactor then error no reactor Redstone port found. And finally, power. Uh, no power bank found. That'll do. Probably. Okay. So that's that. Now we're going to have to add another one. We're going to have to add another uh, local uh, external uh, override equals component prox proxy. And then this is where the address for that is going to go. And I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to add a check for that because that is going to be optional. I am, however, going to put in a check before I use that uh, or check that to make sure that it is present before checking it. And if it's not, we're just going to ignore it uh, because, like I said, it's going to be optional. Uh, if you don't want to add an external override, Although you probably want to anyway, so you could have like just have a lever on it, so you could manually shut the reactor off uh, without having to go through the computer or through a tablet or similar, wherever you have the client program. Um, but yeah, so that is going to be used in determining if the reactor is going to run or not. So let's find where that happens uh, override state I have to remind myself how this works right so if override state is true that means it's going to disable the reactor. Uh, probably want an else. Uh, Uh, 
if the because if the override is false, if the override is not engaged, that means the reactor is allowed to run according to the client. Um, but if uh, external override is uh, set, it's not nil, and external override uh, get, is it get input? I think it's get input. Let's, we're going to pop back into Minecraft. We're going to boot the computer back up. And we're going to head into the Lua prompt. And then we're going to find, no, not computer, redstone. Components, uh, redstone, and then get input. Get input. But that requires a side. Uh, north. So basically, I have to define a side. Although, hmm, maybe it can just check all sides. Um, we can iterate over the sides API. So we could essentially do, we go back here. We're going to have this and for uh, that for key value in pair sides do so value is going to be the side. And then uh, if we have a local input and then have that be uh, initialized at zero. And then if Uh, external override and then get input and then value would be the side number uh, and then greater than zero so if the input is greater than zero on this side set input equals uh, external override get input value for the side and then end and then after the loop if input is now greater than zero uh, because if so it will check all of the sides uh, of the redstone port so if, if basically if there's any strength redstone applied to any side of the override, it will uh, return or it will result, it will detect it. Um, actually, hold on. I don't have a mess, I don't have an event for detecting redstone input, do I? I do not. Maybe that would be a better way of doing it. Yeah, probably. 
Because this is doing this. How often do this, does this run? Every second? That's not super efficient. Yeah, I could do this and probably probably doesn't matter all that much, really. But it's not super efficient either. Now, these things we do have to do because we need to check the uh, tank levels periodically. But we because we don't we don't get events for that. But we do get events for redstone changes. So what would probably be a better idea is if we add a function for handling uh, redstone events and I do not have the parameters for that. So I am going to look those up on the wiki. Let's go event because I know they are listed there somewhere. But I don't quite remember where. Oh, come on. I know all of the signals. This, yeah, here they are. Here we go. Redstone changed. That's the name. We just add that to the end there. And then we have the address. Can I? I can't. No. Lua doesn't have block comments, unfortunately. But whatever. Ah, yes, right. These are pretty sim simple. Uh, so that is the uh, the parameters for that. Uh, so basically what we want to do is we want to check the address. And if that is equal to the address of the external override. Now these are outputs. We use these to control to output redstone and not receive inputs. Uh, but so it, those have to be actual component proxies. But the external override we just need the address. So that doesn't need to be a proxy. Well, I suppose it could be anyway. E... Well, I could get the address out of the proxy because it has an address parameter or an address attribute. Ah, we can just store the address itself. That's probably fine. Where did my function go there? So this we want to check if this equals the address of the external override. If it does, then we are going to have to add a global variable. We're going to rename this to uh, actually leave that like that. And then we're going to have local external override state equals false. And then we're going to set this depending on the new ooh, thunder. Uh, so we're going to set this depending on the new value of the um, Actually, that is, hmm, that could, uh, hmm, 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 that's, that's a bit of a tricky, so 
if the same redstone IO block, if, let's say you have two inputs, two redstone wires touching the redstone IO block from on two different sides. If one turns on, it's going to trigger an event. The old value will be zero because the input on that side was zero before. And then the new value will be say 15. And then you leave that on and then you turn on the other side, then it's going to uh, receive an event for that side where the old value is going to be zero because the input on that side was zero before and the new value is say 15 again. Um, and those are two separate events with the same uh, old value and new value, but on different sides. Now, if you turn one off, you're going to have an old value of 15 and a new value of zero on that side. But the other side is still going to be turned off. So that is actually an issue. We do actually need to check all of the sides of the redstone IO block. But we can still use the event because we only need to do that if there is a change detected. And we don't need to do it every second. So we can save some process, some small amount of processing power on that. Um, but we still need to do the loop like I did before. Although we could probably do it a little more efficiently by not iterating, iterating over each side. We just need to iterate over the cardinal directions, really. Or check each cardinal direction. Although code-wise, it's easier to just iterate over all of them, even though you will probably check, you will be checking some sides uh, multiple times because you have the uh, east and west, for example, north and south, and then you also have left, right, forward and back, uh, which are the same, technically, although uh, the cardinal directions, of course, are relative to the world, and the up uh, or the forward, back, left, and right ones are relative to the block's orientation or the block's rotation. Um, but if you check all of them, you are basically checking each of the four sides twice, and up and down are always the same, of course. And there's only one pair of those. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to yeah, so so the the component, the address is always going to be for a redstone component. So we're just going to call it RS. We're going to see proxy address to create a proxy item. Then we're going to check it against the external override because that is what we are interested in. But instead of doing the uh, setting external override state, we're going to uh, we're going to do the four key value in pairs uh, sides do and then end and if uh, if rs get input on value which is the side greater than zero, then uh, we're going to need here, let's make a local 
value equals zero. Then we're going to set value to the RS get input for value like that, and then and that. And then after the loop, if value greater is now greater than zero, then uh, external override state is going to be true. Uh, else external override state is going to be false. And then end. Uh, so that is going to update that. Now we're going to want to listen to the redstone changed uh, event using event listen and we're going to give it on redstone changed and then we want to add whoops uh, and ignore down here like so to turn it off. So now we're going to add a check here that says if external override state wait we want yeah if state is true the override is enabled and it should uh, shut down if it's false the override is not engaged and it should allow normal operation so if override state then uh, set pipe state to false and set state to false and then else we're going to have all this other stuff down to here so let's elevate this and then we're going to have a print external override enabled exclamation mark there okay so that enables the external override and we've actually run out of time we've gone a little bit over time as well so we're going to have to continue this in the next episode but it seems that Eve works fine. Uh, so shouldn't be too much trouble getting things up and running now. Let's pop back into Minecraft for a bit. Um, still need to make a new hazmat suit helmet. And we're going to hopefully start the reactor up properly next episode. So, I will see you then.